Welcome to the Health Coach Nation podcast. My name is Haley Rowe. I'm a sales and marketing coach and strategist for health coaches, life coaches, and wellness professionals who want to become a leader in their field by building their online community, rocking their sales process, and finally feeling confident about how they promote themselves and their marketing. On this show, we talk about tips to grow your business, save yourself time, and finally be able to create a sustainable, profitable business. Let's get into it. Today's podcast is brought to you by the Zero to Hero Coach Program. This is my four-month program teaching coaches and online service providers how to grow your online business, book clients consistently, overcome your sales fears, and finally rock your social media visibility. If you struggle to create a sustainable coaching business, this program is for you. Check out HaleyRowe.com and book your free strategy call with my team or myself today. Thank you. We are about to talk about time management and how you can stick with a time management system that works for you and isn't something that's overly ambitious that you're never going to stick to in a million years. And it actually was me getting interviewed by Mary, who is on Instagram at The Joy Formula. So if you want to follow her, she does interviews sometimes. And I got to be interviewed by her. Um, so you'll hear me answering questions about time management and you know, procrastination and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to give Mary a shout out and a thank you for having me. And she's on Instagram, so you guys can check her out. Thanks. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to Thursday Tidbits. I'm so excited for today. I have a special guest with us, Haley Rowe. Haley is a habits and business coach and strategist for online coaches and service providers. So I'm going to welcome Haley on here in a second. Today, we're talking about time management. And life is busy, right? We all know how busy life can be. And there's things that we want to do and things that we want to accomplish and become successful at, but we never really feel like we have the time. And so today we are talking about, Haley and I are talking about time management skills that you can actually stick with. So this is a really great episode for Thursday Tidbits. Uh, And I'm going to get Haley on here and we're going to get started. So let's get Haley on the live. Hi. Hey, Haley. How's it going? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for being here today and joining us. I'm excited. How's your day going so far? It's cold. It's like one degree here. It's insane. It was like 65 a week and a half and now it's one. (laughs) So it's, it's freezing. That's why. Yeah. I'm in uh, South Carolina and I'm from Chicago. So I escaped the cold for a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's brutal. I'm from Florida. So this is brutal for me. (laughs) Yeah, I get that. So I'm so happy that you're here joining us. Do a brief introduction. I kind of introduced you, but do a brief introduction. Let everybody know who you are, and we'll get started. Yeah, well, I'm certified as a human potential coach, which happens to um, be why we can talk about time and habits and things like that. And I also do marketing and sales coaching primarily, what I focus on now and helping people with their mindset around that in addition to their strategy around that. Nice. Awesome. Sounds like you're the... You've got the whole scope. My, you, you ha- probably haven't seen Hello. any of my lives, but my cat comes on every single time without fail. So, cat, <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. <laughs> so, I always hear people are saying, "I'm too busy for this. I'm too busy for that," or "I don't have time," and this and that. So, let's get started about talking about time management skills and why it's so important to create discipline and have and cultivate these skills to accomplish your goals. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people feel restricted or like deprived or stressed when it comes to saying you should time batch or you should schedule your time or you got to have your, you got to keep your to-do list and stay on schedule, you know, because people think, well, if I'm giving myself a schedule that I have to stick to, that's so, 
not spontaneous and it's so like restrictive. But I actually think it is the way to create more freedom in your life to give yourself, hey, my scheduled free time today is at this time. Because otherwise, things just don't, we all know, like, if we don't time batch, if we don't schedule, if we don't manage our time wisely, stuff just doesn't happen. It doesn't get done. And being able to be someone who can stick to your word about how you said you were going to invest your day today that is so powerful. It boosts your confidence so much because you become somebody who's like, I honor my commitments. I know if I say I'm going to do something, I get it done. And that is like, it, it takes you to a whole nother level in your personal life and professional life. Yeah, that's so much positive reinforcement too. I'm such a spontaneous person that it has been so difficult for me to become disciplined and create, you know, batch my time and everything. But I've noticed that it, it, exactly what you just said. Like it actually, it, it's so crazy how it kind of reinforces that spontaneity. It's just weird how that works, you know, and that you, I'm putting her down. <laughs> She's clawing at my leg and how it makes you really feel like so disciplined and committed to your ultimate goal. So what are some tricks to get people started to do that when they're like, I can't do that. That's too restrictive or disciplined. Yeah, totally. Well, the first thing I want to add to that is it makes you chances are right now, if you are spontaneous, if you don't spend your time, plan your time, you find yourself sometimes somewhere where you're with family or you're doing work or whatever. And you're constantly feeling that like, I should be doing something else or like, you're not fully present with it. And you're not fully enjoying it as much as you possibly could. Um, and I think that's, to me, that is not fun and free like I would rather schedule it and know it's coming and look forward to it and and like have my stuff done beforehand and then when I'm there like be there you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I think a good place to start is first of all you just have to I, I like to do an audit with my clients so like we use an app called toggle and it's spelled t-o-g-g-l and it allows you to just like you would if you wanted to improve your nutrition, you first got to be aware of what you're eating and, and how you're, so same thing with time. We got to get clear on how are you spending your time right now and what's taking you a long time and all that stuff. So my suggestion would be to um, use that app for like maybe a week or th if you can't commit to that, at least three days and just um, time, like, so for example, when you're on a client call, click the timers, press start client, client calls. And then same thing with cleaning, cleaning, you know, like time yourself for a couple of days. It'll send scrolling, you scrolling, right? Time. Scrolling. Yeah, you better click starter on that timer because you'll start. Yeah. To... It, it is such a good reinforcement tool. Mm -hmm. because If I'm switching tasks in the middle of something, I can't do that because then I got to go to my timer, pause right. it. Get it set up for it brings you back into the now and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm scrolling again. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, I've had to do that before where I've, I, like someone sends me a text or something and I got to go answer it. And so I have to pause my timer and you know, and then you catch yourself and it, where's your, when, when you do that to yourself, your brain gets tired really quickly. Yeah. Cause it's switching tasks all the time. Mm -hmm. So anyways, you time yourself, it sends you the summary at the end of the week via email. And you're able to see, oh, wow, I spent like 13 hours on blah, blah, blah this week. That's crazy. Or maybe I could have somebody help me with that. Or mm -hmm. start to realize what are the gaps with how you're spending your time currently. Then we've got to talk about, well, how do you want to be spending your time? You know, maybe you want to be hitting a target of, I want to do physical activity X amount of hours per week. So where is that going to fit in and what what do I need to let go of and re reconfigure to make time for that right so um first it's just that step of awareness then once you have your little awareness about what you're doing um I suggest doing a huge brain dump every week about just um what you feel you need to do and and before you even do that though I think it's important to know your goals because I think a lot of times people just schedule things that have like aren't even aligned with their priorities, who they want to be, how they want to be spending their time. 
just to feel like important or like they're busy or whatever. And I think it's more important to first have your goals in mind, then do a huge brain dump of all the things. Yes, you have to do obligations for, you know, I got to drop off this at this place. I got to go to the post office, whatever, like just everything, including business aligned things, including things aligned with your goals, including family stuff, et cetera, huge brain dump. Then you want to get into a system you can follow each week. And that system, in my opinion, has to be accessible to you in all places. So I recommend doing this on your phone notes app so you can access it anytime so that when you get ideas about stuff you have to do or whatever, you can just add it to the list. Um, I don't recommend using any fancy spreadsheets or even writing it out on separate pieces of paper because then you're going to have to rewrite or you wrote in pen and then it gets messy. And like, I'm really like, just keep it apps note thing on your phone yeah everybody wants it as pretty and perfect yeah. and you know the the coolest app you know and you're right you can't access it from and then you have an excuse right exactly <laughs> yeah same peter peter said he does it in his yeah. notes same here i love that okay so then you um have to prior put put the different um categories so I recommend having a category for like top priority, this must be done this week type of thing, or there will be major consequences. Right. Um, having a category that's like daily or weekly things that just stuff you have to ongoing have to do every single week. I always have to do my client calls. I always have to answer client support emails. That's just a part of my life. Like, and it's just a daily thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then have a category that's like second priority or like, you know, if I got this done in the next two weeks or so, two to three weeks, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It doesn't need to be done this week. And then have like a someday list or not top priority list. Like that's where you put your ideas, your shiny object syndrome things that are like, Ooh, but I want to watch this webinar, but really you don't need to watch it right this second. Right. So you put that it's on an emergency. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a lot of things on my someday list get resolved themselves. Like I'll look yeah. back at be like that was taken care of it was I don't need to deal with that anymore um so then so once you have the categories then um it comes down to your purse this is where it gets a little personal where we're going to see what works best for you so then it comes down to scheduling your day or your week I'm a big fan of just like some people time management experts say oh you should batch your whole week and you should take the things on your top priority list and put them in the calendar and book when you're gonna do them for the whole week in advance around your other obligations, your appointments, your coaching calls. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep referring to coaching calls because yeah. I, but you're, yeah, I have appointments, you know, you're, you're yeah. meeting, okay? So then, um, but so, so have a cal Google calendar, which is like your regular appointments and stuff you have to do, pick up the kids and blah, blah, blah. And then you can work around that your top priority task. But personally, I don't do that. I don't do the whole week in advance. I do. Um, I have my appointments booked and stuff. But then every day in the morning, I time batch and organize what my day is going to look like. And how I recommend doing this is first just writing down from your notes app list that you have, pick the things off of there that need to be done today and that you would love to do today. And I first do my own brain dump just for the day. Like it would oh. be really nice today if I could get these things done from my big giant master list. And then I actually look at that and say, okay, where's that gonna fit in and is that realistic? And break that down. So you wanna make sure that your tasks that go on your to-do list for today are specifically focus towards the end results and small enough that we can know if it's a yes or no, if you did it. So in other words, you don't want to have on your list today website. What does that mean? Like right. my website, edit the homepage, write the copy for the about page. Like, I don't know what that means. Right. So rather than um, website, you would write down, you know, today I'm going to edit the about page just change my bio and upload a picture or whatever. So um, once you take a look at your brain of what you'd love to get done today and you start like what's top priority and make it small enough, then you put in pencil in your appointments and obligations and stuff you have to do today. And then around the blocks 
without that, you put in the other stuff with the understanding that you need to include and be realistic about driving time, break time, dinner time, <laughs> you know, but the kids. Right. You need a cushion, the, the front end and the back end, right? Yeah. Pretty, pretty well. Buffer. Yeah. And you want to be your own friend in this process, not a punisher or like unrealistic a-hole to yourself. So in other words, you're not going to be like, I'm going to go from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. nonstop with no breaks. And like, you know, right. Factor, you can't repeat that time and time again. Right. Factor in yeah. the time. Um, and one quick thing to add is um, if it, it, this is really important, then I'll be quiet. <laughs> but I know oh, that's okay. you're doing great. No. You really do not want to. Um, it, OK, so when a lot of people are like, but I don't know how long it will take for me to edit my about page or I don't know how long this meeting's going to go you get to decide how long something's going to take and you can either break it down more so that you do know like, Oh, I'm going to research today for 30 minutes, just how to edit a photo on my website or whatever. Or you can decide it's going to take you a certain amount of time, include that buffer time because you know, something might go wrong or it might not get saved or whatever and stick to it. And that's the real challenge. And this is the opportunity to like become up level your life is to make a commitment and be like, that's how long I said it's going to take. It might not be perfect by the end. Whatever I have at the end of this timing block is what I have and it's done. Yeah. There's that quote. If it takes, if you give yourself three hours, it'll take three hours. If you give yourself 30 minutes, it'll take 30 minutes. Right. So right. Um, the name of Linda, the name of the app is toggle with no E right. Yep. Yeah, Haley got it. You got it, Haley. So I have a question. That's so great. I love that. I, I love all the information you just provided and all the tips. I want to ask because this is a big thing for people. Procrastination. I know we didn't talk about that. We were going to talk about this, but you know, mm -hmm. topics come up when people are talking. So what happens when your someday list ends up becoming your, you know, your by by accident or on accident becomes your your emergency list right like yeah. the checking this checking that because people default to those uh i want to say like just routine habits that they don't even realize they're doing when they're on autopilot and it kind of takes over their day like scrolling right checking their email checking all that stuff oh yeah well i love that you brought this up and i think that it's um you have your nice list, you have your time management thing. Now here comes the hard part. You have to actually follow it. And so you <laughs> come up with all the reasons why the other things on your list are more attractive and you should put those first, or you want to scroll social media because we want to avoid unpleasant emotions. And sometimes the things on our to-do list aren't super fun all the time, right? So um, my suggestion would be to when you catch yourself in that moment of like, oh, I want to jump to something else or whatever. Um, I think you are actually creating more work for yourself and you're just delaying the feeling of discomfort and you're still going to feel the feeling of discomfort either, either way. So for example, if, if you're scrolling social media, it's not that you might feel good in that moment, but you're just adding more work for yourself, which is the op complete opposite reason of why you were scrolling in the first place. You were scrolling because you don't want to work. And so when you're scrolling, you know, you're just doing the opposite. You're just right. going to work for you later and more delay. And you're going to be more tired when it's time to actually do the thing. So because chances are you end up doing it at some point, right? Like it's like if you don't want to file your taxes and you don't feel like it, but the deadline comes, you always do it. So right. Like, how pleasant do you want to make that for yourself? Get it done <laughs> or wait till the last minute, right? Um, so that's the first thing is just catch yourself. Second thing is to provide, be planned for that. Like rather than act like oh, it just happened, I started scrolling, I don't know, it just took over me. <laughs> I moving through the screen, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> no, like, I like to have a journal question each morning about like what obstacles might come up today or what might I feel like doing <laughs> when I don't, you know, and how will I prepare or plan or whatever. So sometimes that looks like, well, I'll, if I really want to scroll, like 
I'll schedule that in 15 minutes before bed, like whatever. Yeah. Or it's my reward for finishing this one thing or whatever. So just like be your own little coach in that arena about, I know I'm going to want to do this. Here's what I'm going to tell myself, or here's a reminder I'm going to set for myself. Or when I catch myself scrolling, my pattern interrupt practice is I get off and I, you know, whatever, like you have to have something for yourself. And I think um, if you, um, or I don't know where I was going with the I'll pause for a second. What, what about you? <laughs> well, I was just thinking, you know, because uh, I've, I've come up across this a couple of times on TikTok, and I don't know if Instagram does it or not. I haven't seen it in a while, but the apps actually have um, a video that says, you've been scrolling for a long time, you know? Like, they let you know that you, you've been on there for a while. Um, so it would be awesome if there was an app or some kind of tool in our phone that would alert you. You could set it like if, if, if it catches me, now I'm giving away some grand idea here that could be yeah. a billion dollar making. But if there was some kind of tool in, in, in our phone that would just alert us some kind of alarm, you know, or you set your phone alarm and say, I'm going to allow myself to scroll for 10 minutes. And when that alarm goes off, you hear it and it mm -hmm. distracts you and it says, okay, it's your trigger. Now I have to you know, get off and go do whatever it is that is actually important, you know? Right. Totally. I love that idea. Yeah. And I think like, as long I think also having like a top three each day, like here's the top three things, no matter what I want it, I need to do and putting them as early on in the day as possible. So that even if you do, if you, even if you do scroll later or you do have something come up, you at least can rest assured like that those things are going to be done. And, you know, I, I have a podcast episode about um, procrastination. There's like three tips. Um, so if anybody wants, I think it's HaleyRowe.com slash procrastination if you want more on that. But the last reason though, why I think people procrastinate is because they want to be perfect in what they're doing. So they feel like it's such a daunting task and they feel dread about doing it. So naturally you're going to, want to escape that and not do it right mm -hmm. so I think becoming somebody who can accept that not every thing you produce today is going to be wonderful and mistakes are going to happen and you will mess up sometimes and not being like when the when you are scrolling like oh it's just like in diet world where they say like if you had one piece of cake it doesn't mean now you should eat the whole entire cake four times <laughs> over right, right. <laughs> So if you catch yourself scrolling, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm scrolling. I, I've done it for five minutes. Is that really how I want to spend my time and, and catch yourself early for, and don't act like all or nothing approach. Just get back on track, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we are wired to avoid discomfort. And so, <clears throat> you know, procrastination uh, has a lot to do with anxiety. Just like you said, you know, being uh, feeling discomfort and so I always say, I tell my clients and I preach the choir, the more times you embrace discomfort, the easier it gets because you're just rewiring your brain to be okay with discomfort. And it's not discomfort anymore. And oftentimes, as comforting as scrolling may seem in the moment, it's actually really negative for our brains. And it is a discomfort because we, we come up, all these emotions come up and feelings and judgment and you know we start comparing ourselves i mean there's so many things that go into the whole s scroll right <laughs> and so um we're actually doing ourselves a disservice in the moment we don't even even realize it when we could feel good about ourselves and accomplish hard tasks versus maybe scroll and compare ourselves and judge and feel bad about ourselves because we're not doing the hard thing right <laughs> right it's all the things we make our to-do list mean scrolling mean that wears us out so when it comes to actually accomplishing tasks like ta like doing things isn't necessarily that hard it's usually all the mental drama we have about those things like oh I mean if you wrote po uh you know post video e it's really easy to just post it right but that's like well what are people going to think about it is it perfect enough did I put the thumbnail just right like and so then it becomes exhausting. And mm -hmm. so I, a lot of times time management is not even about the time you have and the time batching. It's about stop adding extra drama to things that don't need to be super, yes. you know? 
Love it. Love it. It's so true. We create so much drama for ourselves that is so unnecessary. Uh, you talked about earlier um, the top three things for the day and get it done. I love the book, Eat the Frog. I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I highly recommend that to anyone who's looking into, um, you know, any kind of time management skills or anything like that. Read the book, Eat the Frog. It's a small book, but it's packed with insight and information. It's a great book. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Essentialism by, I think it's like Greg, somebody, but he just talks about how like literally so many things you, that are on your to-do list, you don't even need to be doing. <laughs> right. And I like the book, the one thing where it talks about focus on that one major thing that's going to move the needle forward the most focus um, and constrain it. It's the whole theme of constraint. Like you don't need to have 12 different goals at one time that you're expecting yourself to work on, you know, like really pick something and go deep with it rather than wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Well, tons of valuable information. You drop lots of gems here, Haley. I really appreciate it. Is there any anything else that maybe we didn't cover one last tip or anything that you want to, you know, hand out to people before we close out? Hmm. Um, I mean, I don't think so. I think that if anybody has questions on the live, um, feel free to share. And um, I love some of the comments that have come in. Somebody's going to try toggle. It looks like. But, yeah. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to check that out. Cause yeah. as a coach, you know, you would probably totally relate to this making reels and stuff. It's like, well, I have to scroll just to see what, you know, what sound is, you know, mm -hmm. doing well or whatever. And then you just get lost. You forget what your end goal was and you just get caught up in the, in right. the scroll. Yeah. I think, yeah, and one thing that just triggered for me to bring up is I think a lot, another reason why people really struggle with time management is because they are indecisive. So part, half of time management is becoming a decisive person. So mm -hmm. to that, thinking about, imagine if both options, whatever you're trying to decide between could work out great and both are equally potential, equal potential. Mm-hmm which one do you like your reasons for doing more and which knowing that, which one do you like your reasons for better and just decide and line up with your decision. So in other words, rather than overthinking and, and being like, I need to know how this decision is going to work out before I make it, make the decision and just make it work. U utilize it until you get there. So in other words, if you're picking a, a goal to focus on, pick it, make it the best choice you possibly can make and understand the byproduct effect, meaning you committing to that one goal, constraining, focusing, implementing it, et cetera, and actually getting it accomplished is going to have a positive effect on the other areas of your life that you were trying to decide between if you wanted to mm -hmm. focus on, you know, so knowing that you can't lose with that versus if you never make a decision and you're kind of half into many different decisions then your results are going to be more mixed and you're not going to be, you know, it's, you're not going to finish things that you wanted to finish. So I think that's a really important point. Yeah. I love that. It's better to take action than to just waste time thinking mm -hmm. about the how the how will figure itself out, right? You will figure it out once you decide to do it. This is kind of off topic, but it goes hand in hand it's all about people are so afraid to fail, right? They're like, they don't take action because they're afraid to fail. And I, failure is quitting mm -hmm. or not starting, right? Like if you're yep. not taking action, you're already failing because you're not yeah. doing it, you know? Yep. And so, yep. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so we can't just not take action because we're too busy deciding, like you said, because I think that's huge. People are so indecisive and they use that as an excuse, right? To not do things. It's a huge excuse or they're afraid that it's not going to work out. Once you take the action and just start going, yeah. everything else is going to figure it out. You've already figured out everything in your life up to this point. Right. You're going to continue to do it, right? 100%. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Haley. Well, thank you so much. Let everybody know where they can find you um, and how to connect with you uh, if, they, if they want. 
Yeah. Well, thank you again for having me. Um, you guys can connect with me on Instagram. I'm at Haley underscore row, H-A-I-L-E-Y underscore R-O-W-E. I also am at HaleyRow.com. I have a free niche marketing training and, um, you know, for your, your followers, actually, what they might like better is my three day consistency challenge. Um, that's at HaleyRow.com slash consistency, and it gets you a little planner. So if you're trying to plan, you know, get, give yourself some morning journal prompts, that's something you can use to become more consistent in the new year. And um, I also have a free community where I met Mary, actually. Uh, and it's called Health Coach Nation. And it's mainly for coaches. But if you're an online service provider or something like that, trying to grow a business, trying to network, you can always be in there. And um, thanks again for having me. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much, everybody. If anybody has any questions or comments or anything for either myself or Haley, feel free to comment below and one of us will get back to you. Um, also, I always end with this. If you want to be a guest here on Thursday Tidbits with me, shoot me a message. Uh, I'm looking for people for March and April. And everyone have a great rest of your day and happy new year. Happy new year. All right, Haley. Thanks so much. I'll talk thanks. to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. And if you liked it and want to reserve your very own free sales audit, go to HaleyRow.com slash strategy hyphen call to book your very own free sales audit. On the call, we'll talk more about the common concerns you get from your ideal clients, how to overcome those concerns, how to coach through objections, how to change your mindset around sales and improve your sales process so you can be closing and converting more clients. I can't wait to connect with you and go to HaleyRow.com slash strategy hyphen call to take the first step. Thanks so much. Have a good day.